person i once again thanks to all the audience especially my honorable vice chancellor professor sri prakash mr tripathi sir just giant without his support nothing will be happening in the department many times he is behind us whatever the things will be happening in the department in the faculty of education in the university he is the behind and key role playing i once again thanks to honorable vice chancellor to providing me an opportunity to conducting this yoc within a short term because yesterday morning only i took this opportunity i spoke with sir sir has given that no 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 you have to go ahead so i asked uh, my very close friend professor mustaq ahmed patel sir who is well versed about this uh, ideology and he is working in maulana azad national urdu university he knows many things that are uh, azad that's why he has also readily accepted my invitation and today we are witness here nearly 60 members are joining so once again i welcome all of you thank you thank you sir thank you so much sir uh, our honorable vice chancellor sir has come uh, good morning sir welcome you sir now i invite professor mustaq ahmed patel sir speaker of this program director of distance education formerly he worked as a registrar and dean of education center in south karnataka he having profound knowledge in education technology computer education research method methodology etc and he have completed major research project and having more than 25 years of teaching experience and he is the author of several books and self learning materials and uh, published many papers and then articles in national and international journals such a vast academic profile we are really proud of you sir for being here with us thank you so much now i over to professor mustaq ahmed patel sir please sir thank you sir for your kind introduction and honorable vice chancellor sir thank you for the opportunity which you have extended to me am i audible yes sir you are audible sir <clears throat> Uh, it's a great occasion that uh, Professor M T V Nagraj, who happens to be my close friend uh, since our Hyderabad days, and uh, has uh, invited me. As you know, we are preoccupied with various works. Till late night, I was in a workshop, but I gathered some time to prepare some slides, which I am going to share. Um, since time was very short, so whatever my perspective, I have. Uh, I prepared in this format. I am going to talk about lessons in learning, uh, contextualizing uh, Maulana Azad and his educational philosophy for our times. A national education policy has also come. He was first education minister. The entire educational system is changing. In this uh, present scenario, it, there is a need to relook uh, into what changes are taking place. so that is why i am planning to look all these things here uh, in this format let let us go step by step uh, first of all i would like to brief you regarding what i am going to talk about i am going to uh, look into modern azad as india india when it uh, india became independent you know the literacy rate was very low in india it was just 18% we have covered a long distance and now our education literacy literacy rate has increased but when literacy rate was very less and during that time we could get an opportunity to shape the nation's future it becomes difficult how to plan so in that context when there was no predecessor nobody to guide him how he might have done that is a thing to be thought again then utilitarian analysis of maulana azad's legacy benefits both the for the present and the future generation which i am going to highlight upon our generation and the present generation are ignorant of uh, major contributions of maulana azad maulana azad uh, is a part of history now so we are forgetting all his uh, contributions and uh, we are uh, so this is the day the education day which is being celebrated by india across the nation 
uh, to remember his contributions and plan our future course of action. The literate and education uh, educated must contextualize his legacy. Whatever legacy our forefathers, including Maulana Azad, have given us uh, as a nation, we have to uh, build upon that. Is it audible? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 If you find any difficulty, please uh, stop me and ask me to uh, repeat or uh, improve upon. If we can dwell, uh, delve into understanding how to become, uh, how uh, he was uh, and uh, what he was. Then uh, next question is, what personal achievements he gathered in his life which allowed him to be remembered today. Uh, we remember our forefathers because of their achievements. Uh, so this is the occasion we have to uh, look into that. Delight, uh, next is Delight, uh, Delight as a nationalist. He was a nationalist, philosopher, writer, and the first education minister of India. I will discuss briefly about Nolana Azhar and take it, uh, you to the uh, present situation. Uh, Maulana Azad was interestingly born in Mecca uh, in 1888, 11th November. That is today. In 1888, he was born. He, uh, his family retained from Mecca and settled down at Calcutta. So he was raised at Calcutta and uh, he died on 22nd February 1958, just four days ahead of the Republic Day uh, during that year. And he is buried near Jama Masjid, uh, which is a place most of the uh, people uh, would like to visit, pay a visit to uh, give him a tribute. As far as his education is concerned, he was born uh, before independence. So there was no formal schooling done so he was educated through religious mode. Uh, his schooling was religious instruction. No formal education was there. If you don't have formal education, you just imagine how you're going to set up formal education in the country. That was a challenge to him as the first education minister. He remained mostly self-taught. What we are talking about, experiential learning, based on our experiences, he is a great example of that. Remained mostly self-taught throughout his life. Uh, he has learned various things. I'm going to discuss as I, we go further. These facts notwithstanding, he lived a uh, prodigious uh, life throughout. His life is an example of which we can imitate. Just think, in olden days, there was no adulthood and uh, adolescenthood. Uh, only there was a childhood and there was adulthood. There was no adolescenthood. Uh, his literary career, career started at the age of 12. <clears throat> what we speak today, a sixth standard boy started writing for Nairangi Alam, which was a poetic journal. He was also writing for Al Mizbah. A weekly magazine. In fact, he was editor of that. A sixth class student being a poet, a writer, and an editor. Just you can imagine what talent he might be having. The other things what uh, I can discuss about his academic leadership is when he was 12, he <clears throat> established a library a reading room, and a debating society. <coughs> I remember of my childhood when I established and conducted tournament, cricket tournaments by involving various teams. So just imagine at the age of 12, he is create, establishing a library, a reading room, and a debating society. This speaks his future orientation what uh, talent he was having. He was married at the age of 13. 13. Now, the marriage has been increased 
to those days it was not there at 13 he contributed literary article to a renowned magazine called Mahzan, a literary magazine. Our professors, assistant professors, try to contribute literary work in reputed magazines. At 13, Molana Azad was contributing. At 15, <clears throat> he became a teacher and he was teaching to the students who were twice his age. At 16, he completed the entire education, traditional course of learning. And he was nine years ahead of his contemporaries. One advocate, one anecdote I would like to share with you. His name had become very popular. You can see at 12, he started writing, editing, and he was writing literary articles. By 16, he had become very popular. So he was invited by some uh, uh, literary, uh, literary people at Lahore. He boarded uh, from a uh, uh, train and got down. There, people came to receive him and they found that there is no person uh, uh, of this name, uh, Firoz Bakht. Nobody is there. So then, they said only a young boy is coming, so we'll ask him, who are you? Then he's told about his name. They were astonished to see that a 16-year affair complex and a good-looking boy is telling that he is the renowned writer. They took him to the stage and at stage he spoke continuously for two and a half hours. Our teachers speak for one hour. He spoke for two and a half hours spontaneously. Then the president of that society, literary society, was Maulana Hali, who was a renowned name by that time. He was 60 years old. Then he said, uh, boy, young boy, I admire your talent. You have got very good talent, he said. Then continuing, uh, continuing with uh, by looking his May, uh, qualities, what qualities he had. When I look at Molana Azar, I look him as a journalist, I look him as a politician, I look him as an educator, I look him as a poet, I look him as a writer, and I look him as a religious preacher. He was a multifaceted personality. He was a linguist, he had knowledge of Persian, Arabic, besides Urdu, Hindi, and English. All these things he learned throughout his life by self-learning. There was no teacher. We talk of experiential learning. Here is an example which can be emulated in present day. He was an internationalist, a traveler. traveler. He traveled extensively to Arab and Muslim world and gained deep understanding about the main currents in those societies. Remember, the travels of our leaders during the pre-independence, I mean, before independence movement also helped us a lot. Gandhiji traveled the entire India, understood the requirement of Indians. He was knowing of the Western world. Nehru was aware of the Western world. Maulana Azad was aware of the Arabian countries. So all these things gave us extensive information how other countries are and how we have to progress. You gain a lot of knowledge if you travel. A scholar who read widely and kept a profound, even encyclopedic knowledge of political and social issues and educationist. <coughs> he had a good knowledge about what is going on in politics. Uh, one of the founding members of Jamia Millia Islamia University, which is situated at Delhi, he was among the founding members. He was a journalist. <coughs> he was a writer <coughs> who started, edited, and wrote India's first national newspaper in Urdu. There were other newspapers, but national list newspaper he started in Urdu. A man of action who led the Khilafat movement and Dharasana agitation. 
you look at our lives when we go to the public service we have to uh, go beyond our families we have to will be uh, during the pre independence moment uh, people were captured and jailed all those things he have uh, they have suffered who uh, he has remained the youngest ever president of indian national congress uh, having been first elected in the position in 1923 at the age of 35 just uh, before the independence he was the president of congress for a such such a great personality various people have got different things to say pandit nehru calls him mere karwa means the leader of the caravan he, pandit nehru further says he has a mind like a, bra- a razor which cut through a fog of ideas and contribute his ideas on religion state and civil society in india then mahatma gandhi says i consider molana azad a person of the caliber of plato aristotle and pythagoras sarojini naidu says molana azad was 50 years of age at his birth so these were the thoughts about molana azad by various people why we have to remember molana azad <coughs> as the first education minister <coughs> definitely we have to remember him molana azad opposed the idea of partition which is very remarkable uh, aspect of his personality he believed that these two countries india and pakistan will now focus uh, on the military and society will not develop uh, to cl- the claim of molana azad was indeed true uh, what molana azad said uh, india and pakistan when a partition was done these two countries india and pakistan will now focus on the military and society will not develop this was his perspective uh, because uh, they will be rubbing each other countries will be rubbing each other and will not progress if united india was there then it would have progressed a lot the claim of molana azad was indeed true for we uh, still have to achieve a lot to be called a mature society after independence his role and responsibility increased because he became the sole muslim leader earlier he was a freedom fighter for the entire nation now he became the leader that is what some scholars like shashi tharoor tells he symbolized the new uh, democracy guarantee that all india uh, all indians could uh, uh, strive for their homeland uh, they have got security and dignity in the homeland because new muslims are finding uh, isolated dejected and rejected so he said that india is a secured and dignified country here they have to remain with him he uh, during the independence time there was a lot of communal carnages he made visit to all the refugee camps and made made powerful speeches to large audiences to promote peace in the newly drawn border areas and encouraging his fellow muslims throughout india to remain loyal to the homeland without fear for their safety and well-being this was a very prime concern during those days loyalty has to be established and it has to be strengthened that is what molana azad's intention was his idea in education his perspective and our context as a first education minister he emphasized that the education provided should be secularizing and constitutionalizing education indian education <clears throat> imagine molana azad himself was given religious education there was no formal education during his time prior to independence there were only few formal education institutions and as an education minister 
he had to secularize and constitutionalize education. That was the uh, foremost important uh, situation for him. He had to facilitate common access to education. Education was not only for the higher strata. It was to be made available for all, including uh, highlighting uh, its social aspects. He had to uh, highlight social aspects, promote the culture of India, which is also the prime objective of national education policy in present day. During the first, uh, first minister's tenure also, these things were emphasized. Learning in vernacular languages. Don't you under, uh, think that our national education policy also speaks about vernacular languages? The first education minister was also talking about vernacular uh, medium education. He, he was championing the cause of women education. I remember that he prepared some draft for women education. But while preparing, during the course of time, he was expired in 1958. After his death, the government carried forward and passed that women's education bill uh, in 1958 only. He established. There was no... Uh, yeah. Uh, is my slides visible? Are my slides visible? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, yes, sir. Right. Yeah, as a first education minister, he didn't have any uh, anybody prior to him whom he can emulate. Now, as an education minister, he established University Grants Commission <coughs> to strengthen higher education. University education should not be only philosophical oriented, only language oriented, or literature oriented. So uh, that is why it was informed. Okay. Uh, he established Indian Institute of Technology, then Indian Council of Cultural Re uh, Relations. He established for uh, uh, Sahitya Academy, Sangeet Nakat Natak Academy, and Lalit Kala Academy. I think uh, I have to hurry up because very uh, short time is there. That is what the organizers have informed. Uh, idea in education, uh, continuing with that, he, established, uh, he was discussing in a Central Advisory Board of Education. He emphasized uh, he emphasized. Okay. Slide 10. Uh, Ideas sorry. in education. Uh, universal compulsory basic Our education context. for all children. Central Social Advisory inclusion. Board of Education meeting emphasized the five fold program. Uh, social inclusion One for adult compulsory basic education measures for, all for children of school implement age. in the quality Ten and expansion education of for facilities for secondary and higher education. Three measures Technical for and scientific in the quality of and expansion of facilities for secondary and needs. higher education. A measures for enrichment for of cultural and scientific life of the community by encouraging the arts needs. And, and providing facilities for Five measures for the enrichment of the needs. cultural life of I'll the community by encouraging arts and uh, providing facilities for recreation and other amenities. Uh, is huge. Idea Slide of 11. identity in a Legacy democracy. Azad. Democracy should be there. Institutionalization of learning should also exist. Promoting that education is towards social ends. Access to knowledge, Access and, learning to and, learning knowledge and learning outcomes. Knowledge and idea of learning identity in a democracy should not be restricted to only a few uh, few uh, uh, parts of the society. It should be available for all. Promoting education towards social end. As you know, only 18 percent were literate. We had huge illiterate population, so uh, adult education also he emphasized. Institutionalization of learning. Learning was going on in madrasas, ashramas, and monasteries. So that was to be made uh, formal education, and the institutions were to be created, school education, higher education, and research institutions, and technical education. 
So this is what the legacy of Maulana Azad is. I'm just skipping few slides so that I can take you to next. These slides speak about these things. As the organizers have told me, I'll be sharing these slides, link of this slide, which I'll be placing on my blog. Then, learning in our times, I'm going to look into six components very quickly. Subject expertise, student engagement, teaching environment, relationship build, building, moral standing, and honesty and appreciation. Subject expertise. Good teachers have domain knowledge and expertise in the subject. Address emerging issues with content and reference resources. Content will be clear and students, they will give references also. Understanding the emerging issues in the education. So such expert, experts have to be there. These are our requirements and subject expertise is required. Student engagement. This is a prerequisite for an excellent teacher. Student engagement. That is why present days we are concentrating, especially in education, experiential learning. 5E model. We do not know what kind of background the child is coming. Sometimes they are more learned than the teacher himself. Teaching environment. What type of teaching environment has to be there in the present time? Congenial and meaningful classroom environment has to be there. No one-way communication. There has to be a two-way dialogue. Then, among um, the teacher and the taught and the children, students themselves also. Also, stakeholders and environment to work for education. The environment, including the school and the parents and the home, have to work for the education of the uh, students. Democratic setup in the classroom has to be there. Idea sharing has to take place. <clears throat> relationship building. Teacher to build a relationship with students. Uh, it is not that the teacher will say the students will follow. The teacher has to die, uh, guide them. Many students lose interest as students do not enjoy comfortable relationship with the teachers. Most of them, when asked, they do not like mathematics because they may, uh, may not like the teacher. So a relationship has to be emphasized. IQ, EQ, and group cohesiveness are important in relationship building. Lastly, moral standing. Teachers to take moral responsibility. They should be morally uh, 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 strong. Uh, there should be an example for the students to follow. Students are consciously or unconsciously affected by the personal traits of teachers, the way they talk, the way they live, or the knowledge they have, everything affects the students. An excellent teacher also carves talented students. An outstanding teacher leaves a legacy of outstanding uh, a student achiever. Uh, there is an uh, anecdote below that. I'm not going to tell you because of paucity of time. You can read it later. Honesty and appreciation. The teachers must appreciate idea from the student, accept her or his lack of knowledge, acknowledge the contribution of the student, and be expressive of her or his limitations. Students always like teachers who are honest in their approach and work hard to overcome his or her limitations. There are few more things. Uh, national education policy uh, is talking about vernacular medium education, which was emphasized by Maulana Azad. Free and compulsory education we are talking about. Uh, that was also proposed by Maulana Azad. First, as a first education minister, 
he had 1 crore as budget he asked for 4 crore but during that time uh, there uh, were people who had migrated to india india had to build up its military uh, various aspects so indian uh, government uh, doubled the budget from 1 crore to 2 crore he was not happy but he understood the situation and adjusted to it and he had a good vision of the education i thank you uh, the organizers for giving me an opportunity to interact with you as i am told to finish by 9 11:45 uh, so i am handing over uh, uh, the space to the organizers thank you ha sir ha sir Sir, thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Mustak Hamas, sir, for your wonderful talk. And then very short time, and we were very elaborately, you have talked about uh, uh, the National uh, Renewed Academy of Maulana Azadji. Thank you so much, sir. And we have with us just recently joined our Dr. Jay Prakash, sir. And then Dr. Karnagaran Reddy, sir, from and uh, Dr. Mahabub Muli Mushidabad from West Bengal. We are welcoming you for this uh, national education. Thank you. Now, I request uh, Professor Sri Prakash Mani Tripathi, sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Indira Gandhi National Tribal University, to give presidential address. Uh, please, sir. Dhanwad, Dr. Ramesh. Aaj ke karyakram ke ayojak. Professor MTB Nagaraju, Professor Raut, of Siksha Sankar, ke sabhi Siksha Gan, Mukhya Bhakta, jinho ne bhot achhi baat ki, aise Professor Mustaq Ahmed ji, mein bhot dhyan se sun raha tha aapko. Tar Maulana Abul Kalam Azad ke baare mein itne gur, byapak, aur sargarpit samik bhi baatein sunkar mujhe bhot pasanta hui. Wo sabhi jo aaj is digital platform par drastak bhi hain. वे सभी जो किसी न किसी रूप में जुड़े हैं, देख रहे हैं अथवा सर्वप्रथम आप सभी को शिक्षा दिवस की बहुत-बहुत बधाई और बस्तुता शिक्षा के माध्यम से ही सामर्थ्य की प्राप्ति होती है और हम अपने धेय को प्राप्त करने में सफल होते हैं। हमारे देश के प्रथम शिक्षा मंत्री मौलाना अबुल कलाम आजाद जी की दृष्टि शिक्षा को लेकर बहुत ज्यादा व्यापक थी कि कैसे शिक्षा के माध्यम से हम इस देश में एक समर्थ समाज की रचना करें एक समर्थ समाज की रचना करें और एक सहभागी समाज की रचना करें जिसमें सभी के लिए स्थान हो सबकी पहचान हो और सबका सम्मान हो वस्तुतः शिक्षा से ही एक राष्ट्र की पहचान होती है राष्ट्र की गरिमा बढ़ती है और राष्ट्रीय चेतना का विकास होता है स्वतंत्र आंदोलन के उन नायकों में रहे हैं अबुल कलाम आजाद जिनके मन में राष्ट्रीय चेतना के प्रति अगाध लगाव और इस चेतना से संचालित रहे निरंतर अनुप्राणित भी रहे हम आप सब जानते हैं कि उन्होंने इस देश की जितनी अकादमिक संस्थाएं हैं उनकी रचना में महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका का निर्वहन किया जिसके बारे में भी प्रोफेसर मुस्ताक जी बता रहे थे कैसे जो जीसी संगीत नाटक अकादमी साहित्य अकादमी ललित कला अकादमी भारतीय सांस्कृतिक संबंध पर जितने आईआईटी सबके बारे में उनकी सोच बहुत व्यापक थी कि आज का जो दौर है हमें अधुनातन और परंपरागत दोनों दृष्टियों से शिक्षा को स्वरूप देना होगा उनकी यह मान्यता रही कि शिक्षा से ही हमारे अंदर सकारात्मक वृत्ति जागृत होती है और शिक्षा से ही हम अपने को समझते हैं अपनों को समझते हैं समाज को समझते हैं राष्ट्र को समझते हैं और अंततः पूरी मानवता को समझते हैं शिक्षा हमें हमारी मूल भावना को जागृत करने का अवसर देती है हम लोग बहुधा कहते रहते हैं कि एजुकेशन इज नॉट ओनली व्हाट वी हैव लर्न रादर व्हाट रिमेंस व्हेन वी फॉरगेट व्हाट वी हैव लर्न शिक्षा केवल इतना ही नहीं है जो हमने सीखा है बल्कि शिक्षा वह है जो तब भी शेष रह जाती है जब हम भूल जाते हैं कि हमने क्या सीखा था तो इसलिए शिक्षा तो हमें अंतर दृष्टि प्रदान करती है और इसी अंतर दृष्टि को लेकर के मौलाना अबुल कलाम आजाद चलते रहे और भारत को कैसे भव्यता मिले दिव्यता मिले और कैसे आने वाले दिनों में जिसके बारे में आजकल बार बार हमारे माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी कहते हैं कि आज की और आने वाली दुनिया ज्ञान की दुनिया है और इसमें हमें महाशक्ति बनना है 
महासक्त बनाने की पीठिका तैयार करने का सारा श्रेय जाता है मौलाना अबुल कलाम आजाद को हमारी परंपरागत शिक्षा हो तकनीकी शिक्षा हो आधुनिक शिक्षा हो या सामयिक शिक्षा हो सभी के बारे में उन्होंने सम्यक दृष्टि रखते हुए विचार किया था आप सभी शिक्षाविद हैं जानते हैं कैसे गांधी जी बुनियादी शिक्षा की बात करते सबको लेकर के मौलाना अबुल कलाम आजाद ने भारत की शिक्षा नीति के बारे में एक रूपरेखा प्रस्तुत की एक विधिवत व्यवस्था दी और उसी से हम लोग प्राथमिक से लेकर उच्च शिक्षा तक संचालित होते हैं सीखते हैं पढ़ते हैं और बढ़ते हैं आज के दौर में शिक्षा की बड़ी महत्ता है राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति का क्रियान्वयन किया जा चुका है हमारे विश्वविद्यालय ने सबसे पहले इसका क्रियान्वयन किया और इसमें जड़ से जगत तक पहुंचने का विधान है मौलिकता प्राप्त करने का विधान है परंपरागत ज्ञान और अधुनातन ज्ञान दोनों में समन्वय करने का विधान है और वस्तुतः हमें अपने विद्यार्थियों को वैश्विक नागरिक रूप में तैयार करने की बात कही गई है इसीलिए इसमें जिज्ञासा पर बल है रचनाशीलता पर बल है और संकल्पबद्धता पर बल है इन सभी के बारे में अपने व्याख्यान में बार बार अबुल कलाम आजाद जी कहते रहे इस बार इस शिक्षा दिवस का थीम है एम्ब्रेसिंग इनोवेशन नवाचार को अपनाना आजकल जानते हैं माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी बार बार कहते हैं कि इस राष्ट्र में कौशल विकास होना है स्किल अप स्किल री स्किल सारी बातें होती रहती हैं और सबसे महत्वपूर्ण बात है नवाचार और इस नवाचार के माध्यम से ही जो शिक्षा का ध्येय है हम उसे पूरा कर सकेंगे यह शिक्षा ही है जिसके माध्यम से हम स्थानीय के लिए मुखर हो सकते हैं और इसे वैश्विक बना सकते हैं हम ध्यान करें अपने गुरुकुलों का जो वस्तुता उस समय के विश्वविद्यालय थे और वैज्ञानिक स्थल थे जहां से समाज कल्याण के लिए बहुत सारे सूत्र रखे गए और वस्तुता वही सूत्र आज धरातल पर दिखलाई दे रहे हैं जिसके माध्यम से हम सभी निरंतर आगे बढ़ रहे हैं आज पुनः आवश्यकता है कि हम इसे सहेज कर आगे बढ़ने का काम करें शिक्षा वह है जो हमें मुक्त करती है वर्जनाओं से संकीर्णताओं से अभाव से बाधाओं से आई हम सब मिलकर भारतीय शिक्षा के उस देह को सभी सुखी हों सभी आगे बढ़े सभी का कल्याण हो सर्वे बहुत सुखना सर्वे संतु निराम्या सर्वे भद्राण पश्यंतु माँ का सिद्ध भाग भविष्य आप सभी ने ध्यान पूर्वक सुना इसके लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और प्रोफेसर मुस्ताक जी को भौतिक रूप से भी यहाँ आना है उनका विशेष व्याख्यान शिक्षा संकाय में रहेगा मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा उन्हें सुन करके और आप सभी को कि बहुत कम समय में आपने तैयारी कर ली यद्यपि आजकल अवकाश की स्थिति है फिर भी एक बहुत अच्छा कार्यक्रम आप उन्होंने किया इसके लिए प्रोफेसर नागाराजू सहित पूरे शिक्षा संकाय को मेरी ओर से बहुत बहुत मंगल कामनाएं धन्यवाद